on other conditions that might stem from the time of spread? Autoimmune? There's, um, I guess I'll answer that. There are a couple of diseases where you see thymic hyperplasia. One of them is, is, are, is um, uh, hyperthyroidism, autoimmune hyperthyroidism. So people with autoimmune hyperthyroidism can have um, hyperplasia of the, thy of, 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 the, uh, of, of the thymus. Um, what the relationship is between, and, and, and usually when they get their, th the, the hyperthyroidism treated, that, that uh, um, hyperplasia the, of the thymus goes away. Um, so exactly what the immune relationship is is not, is not clear. But to my knowledge, those are the two autoimmune disorders, myasthenia and hyperthyroidism, that have some connection with the, with the thymus. Thank you. Yes, sir. Is there an age restriction with the robotic surgery that there is with the major chest splitting surgery? Well, the restrictions are much less. I'll let Dr. Julianati. Thank you. Uh, question, please. Yeah. So the um, the question was, um, is there an age restriction with the robotic um, a thymectomy um, as there is with the with the sternal splitting procedure? Maybe I'll just let Dr. Julianati. I wouldn't say a restriction for robotic surgery. I already mentioned a few indications for still the plastic surgery, maybe a huge tumor, uh, the inability to access the next time, or massive adhesions in the viewer, in the line that they are uh, making an obstacle to navigation. But rather than that, I don't see restriction. Might be a restriction uh, or contraindication uh, uh, for anesthesia, but because the procedure requires anesthesia. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we are discussing the indication for time act, and I do agree with uh, our, our uh, Dr. Wu and Dr. Mary Jolly that uh, probably uh, the best indication for time act are not the, the oldest patient, but they, they can be controlled with the medical treatment. But theoretically, there is no restriction. If the anesthesiologist say, okay, there is no cardiac, there are no cardiac problems, no pulmonary problems, uh, uh, anesthesia, the operation usually takes uh, one hour and a half, two hours to be done. It's not a long procedure. The age that we talked about, that it's best to operate before 40 or 50 years of age, is not related to the type of incision, whether it's open or robotic. It's more of our understanding of the disease that patients that have the operation at a younger age tend to have more chance of clinical improvement. So regardless of, of the approach, because the, both the robotic incision and the classic incisions are being used in much older patients for other diseases, and we tend to do okay as well. We don't really have data on, let's say, elderly patients getting thymectomy. We don't have data on ocular patients getting thymectomy because we just don't do it. So perhaps as the procedures become less and less invasive, maybe we'll get a little looser with the age restrictions and we'll be able to see a benefit. We, we don't know. Uh, Dr. Rowling comment, uh, usually the indications uh, are the results of the balance. The balance between uh, benefits from a procedure and uh, the connected risk. If you change something in the balance, uh, maybe that you can extend the indication for them, actually probably in uh, some other uh, categories of patients that so far have been uh, considered not the best indication. Is there any evidence that diet or supplements, vitamins, minerals, or anything will help in the symptoms, symptomatic relief from myasthenia gravis? <laughs> There's, um, uh, there's no evidence that uh, supplements or uh, uh, herbal preparations or um, uh, multivitamins or anything like that. Diet, um, uh, diet you know, obviously, if, if you have a healthy diet, you're going to feel better regardless. Um, but there's no, there's no particular myasthenic diet. Okay. Is, there, is there any feedback from the Robotic surgery, can you actually feel what you're doing when you're doing 
uh, is not a classical tactile feedback. So at the moment, uh, you are just uh, looking at the images and, and reacting to the modification of the images, uh, but you don't feel uh, that you are touching tissue. But we have a new generation uh, of, of, of robots uh, uh, we included the tactile feedback. So you will be touching, and when you, you will get the impression that you are touching uh, that kind of tissue. I was explaining that I'm not sure that investing uh, on an older sense, uh, like uh, tactile feedback, uh, is, a, is a worthwhile to do. Because uh, with the tactile feedback, uh, uh, you are not able to do much. Recognizing cancer, no. Differentiating tissues, no. And so it's, it's a kind of primitive sense, uh, at least uh, surgically speaking. Uh, we would be better invest on new generation of senses, like uh, oncogenic senses, uh, uh, radio frequency sensor, uh, uh, thermal sensor. So we, we will have a new generation of senses that probably would be much more helpful for the surgical procedure. How can I get like a right information from a, from a doctor? Well, I think you just need to see the right, um, uh, the right person. So well, sometimes, see, sometimes, see, sometimes see information. well, sometimes, sometimes there's it's difficult because some of the some of the symptoms of myasthenia can be a symptom of a stroke, and so. Um, uh, there are different, there are clear differences um, uh, that, that should be able to, should allow someone to be able to distinguish between the two. Um, as far as, as, as uh, you know, there are certain, even neurologists, who, um, uh, who see a lot of myasthenia, there are others who don't see very much. And so I think it's important if you may have something like myasthenia, again, we can't make any 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 specific comments on your particular case because you know I've never seen you in the clinic, so I can't you know, I, I, I I can't say. But but what I what I can say is that there, if you're having symptoms and it's not clear whether the symptoms are due to stroke versus myasthenia, there are ways of distinguishing between the two, and then, and, and and I think that it's at least partially a matter of getting to the right position. Mm -hmm. I had one girl in the evening, and they said that the thymus was no value to the body. Yeah, I explain that. Well, the classic thinking is that after a certain age, we no longer need the thymus gland. Um, and there doesn't seem to be much in the way at all of serious sequelae from removing the thymus gland from an adult. However, from a young child, that's a different matter. They do need that thymus plan for normal development of their immune system. Well, the question was, what's the average length of stay in the hospital after a bioconectomy? And how fast are these uh, patients uh, back to the regular world? And uh, to answer the question, it varies uh, from patient to patient, but the average length of stay is about two days uh, in the hospital. Usually we leave in, and some patients we leave in a brain called chest tube that gets removed uh, within 24 hours of the operation. And uh, within the following 24 hours, the patients are prepared to go home. Those who are younger and more fit uh, have even faster recovery, and we've seen patients spend only one day in the hospital. Uh, as far as the second part of the question, uh, how fast can they go back to the work? Uh, as compared to the old classic incision, it is much faster, but it also comes down to what type of work. Uh, usually people who are in teaching, secretarial, desk work, uh, could be back within the same week once we get them off the uh, tiny little pain pills that's required to control the pain in the early post-operative time. Uh, people who are in more uh, an aggressive type of work that requires carrying things and going up and down stairs might take a you know, few more days, but usually within a week or two, uh, almost everybody's back to work. People uh, can bike, they can play basketball. Uh, the fact that there's no uh, broken bones that needs to heal with these tiny little incisions uh, makes the healing much faster and makes coming back to physical activity baseline 
uh, much faster. And once you get that clinical improvement that's added, uh, patients in, in general feel more energetic and, and feel that uh, they can do more after the surgery compared to before. What would make you a candidate for a thyroid if you didn't have a tumor is my question. Um, I think that follows with what we were saying. As it stands right now, we would probably treat medically. Is that going to change in the near future? Quite possibly, you know. It, are there thymic pathology in patients? Usually the thymic pathology, you're the thymic expert, what we see is up to about age 50. So when we remove a thymus after that age, usually what we get is a lot of adipose tissue, fat, without much thymus and usually without any thymic abnormalities. So, see, we don't know if it's even going to help at that stage. But I think, I mean, your point is very valid, and things may very well change. Um, we have to probably do studies, at least keep track of the patients, um, so that we know what direction to go in the future. Well, Musk MG is relatively recently described, so that's maybe why you haven't heard of it. You know, I don't know, maybe five years ago now, some maybe longer. Somebody discovered that there was a different kind of antibody in some patients with myasthenia that didn't have the acetylcholine receptor antibody, and that it's called Musk. And they, these patients also have a little bit of different disease as well. One of the things we pointed out is they have normal, normal thymus, which is different. They also tend to have more severe disease, more respiratory involvement, more speech. They're a little bit different, but still respond to much of the same treatments um, as regular myasthenia. Um, 